Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks. Uh, it's uh, 3 o'clock, a little after 3. We'd like to uh, get started. Uh, today is Wednesday. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's the first time in 10 months I've said today. Today is Wednesday. I uh, want to uh, jump right in uh, with uh, a bit of an update. Remember, if you have a question, uh, simply write it in the comment section below uh, the live stream. Happy to get to as many as we can this afternoon. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, as a quick update, uh, we have now uh, conducted and completed uh, 203,960 total COVID uh, related tests. So uh, nearly 204,000 uh, total tests conducted over these last nine months. Uh, we have confirmed 5,355 uh, total cases, and currently we are monitoring 154 active cases. Now that number um, is uh, uh, higher than it's been uh, over the course of the last several weeks. However, uh, there <clears throat> is a good amount of, uh, of good news. Uh, 154 cases, of course, uh, is uh, something we want to uh, be aware of. We are at uh, 13 hospitalizations uh, within the county and now at 164 uh, deaths. And I'd like to get to that uh, in a moment. Um, uh, the regional positivity rate or, or um, percentage of those with uh, uh, testing positive uh, is 2%. So the Hudson Valley region is at 2%. You can see those counties and how we uh, uh, break down those numbers. Uh, Sullivan and Rockland at about 5%. Sullivan at 4.9%. Rockland at 5.1%. A percent a positivity rate. Orange County has come down considerably over the course of the last several weeks, now at 1.9%, uh, and uh, Duchess uh, is at 9 tenths of 1%. So Duchess uh, and Putnam uh, at the lowest end of the positivity rate, and we've hovered at about 1%. Uh, about a week ago, we were at 4 tenths of a percent. We've been uh, as high as 1.2, uh, but we've been just about 1% these last several uh, weeks, uh, and for that we're grateful. That means, uh, one, the disease obviously just isn't transmitting, and folks are uh, are basically following the expectations. Uh, if if we weren't, uh, we'd see uh, spikes uh, in uh, in positivity. Again, uh, 164 uh, deaths. We did have one additional death uh, this last week. Uh, we're sorry uh, certainly for that, and extend our thoughts and prayers to the family uh, impacted. That one death, however, just uh, um, as uh, clarity, uh, is not associated with either of the, the clusters we identified several weeks ago, and I'd like to jump to those now. Uh, that is not a, a death related to the Hedgewood cluster. Hedgewood Assisted uh, Living uh, Facility in Beacon, uh, no new cases. So uh, for our, from our perspective, uh, no additional cases, no active cases in the facility related. Uh, and uh, there are, however, a few individuals who remain hospitalized at St. Luke's uh, in Orange County, County. Now, they'll remain there until they, they no longer test positive. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the good news is having seen that, uh, seen the disease sort of break through that facility, sadly, uh, several individuals succumbed to the disease at Hedgewood Assisted Living Facility in Beacon, uh, but uh, there are now no new cases uh, and no active cases at the facility, which is uh, very good news. Uh, the uh, cluster has been contained. Uh, the, uh, our uh, health uh, commissioner, uh, Dr. Wythian, has um, uh, rescinded uh, the quarantine order uh, and uh, we'll uh, continue to work with the administration there. But no new cases, no active cases at the Hedwood Assisted Living Facility. Uh, there are several individuals who remain uh, hospitalized at uh, St. Luke's in Orange County, uh, and uh, we're very, uh, very happy that uh, we uh, have seen uh, such progress there uh, these last several days. Now, Marist College, uh, we referenced an identified cluster. <clears throat> now, remember, uh, uh, that this doesn't mean that there aren't other cases uh, at Marist, uh, but a, uh, a cluster is sort of this, this densely populated, sort of uh, um, uh, easily transmitted among a higher number of people. Marist College, uh, the cluster uh, there has uh, basically run its course. Uh, there are a total uh, of um, uh, 30 cases related to the cluster, but no new cases since uh, we last got together last week. So a total of 30 associated cases, no new cases, uh, and all precautionary uh, steps uh, uh, that Marist has had taken uh, were lifted on Saturday. And if you're interested in the specific details of uh, those uh, restrictions, what still exists, uh, you can visit marist.edu. But again, uh, uh, let's do that very quickly. Again, uh, no new cases, no active cases at the Hedgewood Assisted Living Facility. That cluster uh, has been contained. Uh, several individuals remain hospitalized at St. Luke's in 
Orange County, and at Marist College, a total of 30 uh, uh, total cases related uh, to that cluster. However, no new cases uh, associated with it since we've last met. So from our perspective, the cluster at Marist College has run its course. And for more information, you can visit marist.edu. Now, you may know that Bard College announced uh, yesterday some additional uh, precautions. This is not unusual, and I, I, I happen to live in the northwest corner of Dutchess, so I, I do see a lot of comments related uh, to uh, what goes on at, uh, at, at Bard and certainly Red Hook, Rhinebeck area. Um, this is not, um, um, this isn't anything uh, that uh, should be alarming. Uh, Bard is implementing um, precautions that several schools, schools and universities implemented uh, going into this semester. They chose, however, uh, to uh, live within a, a lesser restrictive environment, uh, manage uh, the transmission of the disease, monitor uh, and work with students, faculty, and work with the county and state health departments. They have decided, uh, pri primarily uh, we, we would assume because we know a flu, uh, flu season's upon us and folks are going to be spending more time indoors, it is likely uh, that the ability to transmit the disease is going to be uh, more um, uh, possible in that environment and therefore they have decided uh, to close general access, so public access to the campus. This doesn't mean students or faculty can't come and go, which they have been doing already, uh, and it doesn't mean that students coming and going pause any, uh, cause any risk or associate or uh, provide any risk uh, to us. In fact, I'd offer to my neighbors in Red Hook, some of whom have said this even out loud, you know, well, what difference does it make if students go back and forth? Well, the difference is that, um, uh, that uh, this is a, a, an incremental step uh, that the college has decided to take as, as a precaution totally appropriate, totally legitimate, and, and certainly something that we can support uh, and will continue to work with Bard uh, College. So if uh, you're interested in knowing what those specific precautionary steps uh, were, uh, you can visit bard.edu. Bard.edu, that's their website, and get additional information uh, regarding uh, Bard College's precautionary steps. All, again, appropriate, but general access or access from the general public uh, has been curtailed at Bard. Uh, the precautionary restrictions associated uh, with the cluster at Marist were lifted on Saturday, and uh, there are now no new or active cases at Hedgewood Assisted Living Facility uh, in Beacon. So uh, those areas of concern have been uh, addressed and will continue to work with those institutions. <clears throat> uh, if you have a question, uh, write it in the comment uh, field below the live stream. Happy to get to a few of those uh, today. Uh, over the weekend, you know, the governor announced uh, some relief uh, from several restrictions. Uh, movie theaters in Dutchess County, we've been under 2%, uh, but movie theaters um, in Dutchess County can begin reopening uh, this Friday. Uh, movie theaters can uh, provide up to 25% capacity, but not more than 50 people per screen. So up to 50 people. Uh, or uh, uh, up to 50 people per screen, not, not more than 25%, not more than 25%, not more than 50 people per screen. Um, uh, and uh, theaters can only open in counties that are below uh, 2%, which, as I've said, uh, we remain and have remained below 2%. So beginning Friday, movie theaters in Dutchess County can begin to open. Uh, uh, you are required uh, to wear a mask when not seated. Uh, and that theaters uh, will provide assigned uh, seating with social distancing. Uh, all will have met uh, enhanced air filtration and, pu and purification standards, uh, and uh, our local theaters do uh, plan to open, including uh, the uh, locally owned theaters, uh, which you likely know, uh, and uh, Regal, uh, which did announce uh, uh, several weeks ago that they were closing indefinitely. They'll begin the process of opening as well. So um, if you have questions, you should visit those particular websites. But as you know, we've uh, supported reopening uh, movie theaters with limited capacity. Uh, they've been open in other states for a period of time, and we've been able to monitor activity. No associated cases related to movie theater openings in the states uh, that uh, have been open, uh, certainly around us. Uh, and uh, we support uh, this next step, and we'll continue to work with those theaters locally uh, to, uh, to provide them assistance. I'd offer to you that, um, uh, if, again, uh, it's your choice. If you don't feel safe uh, and you don't feel comfortable going to a movie house, that's, that's your choice, but they'll begin opening on Friday uh, of this week and uh, with limited capacity. Uh, one question that has come up uh, is if you're in the same family uh, or the same household, it's expected that you could sit together depending on the theater. I know that uh, uh, most of the locally owned have uh, chosen that that's acceptable, so uh, uh, folks who live in the same household would sit together, but 
um, you would be socially distanced from another group uh, that, uh, that or individual that would be seated uh, together. Additionally, um, ski resorts in New York can begin opening on uh, November the 6th. Uh, big business in the region uh, and certainly uh, something that uh, many residents will be interested in. Um, so uh, masks are required when not eating, drinking, or skiing. Uh, so uh, you... Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, ski resorts can begin opening on November the 6th. Masks uh, require, um, uh, masks require, excuse me, <laughs> masks are required when not eating, drinking, or skiing. Uh, lifts are restricted to members of the same party, so if you travel together, you can seat, sit together, uh, and all will meet uh, clearing, cleaning and disinfecting along with safety uh, protocols. Uh, so. Uh, last week, we did get a question regarding indoor hockey. I wanted to make sure I answered that question. Uh, hockey remains on the state's higher risk sports activity, and therefore they're uh, you're only allowed uh, to engage uh, in non-contact training or drills. But no games as of yet. The state has still not issued any guidance or guidelines for uh, hockey. I will say that we do find a degree of, uh, uh, of inconsistency uh, as it relates to um, ski resorts uh, being open, um, haunted uh, 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 mansions and, 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 and what have you being open, uh, but still no guidance for, uh, for activities like hockey. Uh, so hopefully uh, guidance will, become, uh, uh, will be issued by the state soon. Uh, however, uh, if you are looking for that information, you can visit newyorkforward.gov, nyforward.gov. Uh, Dorothy, um, uh, hold on one second. Um, uh, Dorothy has asked uh, about news that the president is thinking of withholding funding to New York State. Um, well, um, the president says lots of things, and uh, not all of them are entirely um, uh, uh, clear. Uh, and so in this case, uh, uh, what I think the president has been saying uh, is, is contradictory, although uh, somewhat promising, I'll say this clearly. Um, the White House uh, claims to be supporting state and local funding. Uh, they claim that uh, they want to negotiate a state and local funding package, and there have been ongoing negotiations between the White House and the House of Representatives, the Speaker. Uh, the President's p position publicly and what we know privately has been that if uh, the House of Representatives and the White House can come to some agreement, the United States Senate will support that. We support state and local aid, uh, and certainly it is inexcusable and not appropriate to withhold aid uh, from one state or another. I will say this, however. Um, that federal aid is likely to come with restrictions, and it ought to. Uh, there needs to be accountability, uh, and uh, there are financial concerns in the state, in this state, that have nothing to do with COVID. Uh, and uh, there needs to be an acknowledgement that we all have to be responsible with your tax dollars. The federal government, state governments, and local governments, this just can't be a blank check to anybody, to me, uh, to Albany, uh, or to Nevada. At the end of the day, um, it is the responsibility of the federal government to step in and provide assistance uh, when uh, an emergency exceeds the capacity of any other level of government. That's the way we do it in America. And never before has the federal government left its state and local governments to fend for themselves during a moment of crisis, and this is not that time either. So uh, it is not appropriate. I will tell you we have similar concerns at the state level. It's not appropriate to withhold state funding from local governments or counties uh, because you don't necessarily agree with the way they've approached uh, problem solving. We're all in this together. We're all trying to work together to confront this challenge. Um, and uh, we, um, uh, we believe uh, that it is appropriate for uh, the federal government to provide aid, uh, and that aid is necessary at the state and local government level, and we'll continue to advocate for that. So I, I offer that to you and, and definitely uh, hope uh, that uh, our national leaders will summon the courage to negotiate something that is acceptable uh, and appropriate to assist. And we'll talk a little bit about budget items uh, in a moment. Uh, additionally, uh, you likely know that uh, the states of Connecticut uh, the states of Connecticut, New Jersey, uh, and New York uh, have expanded the, uh, uh, well, um, have these travel advisories. Um, so there are 40 uh, states and territories now on the travel advisory list. They, uh, they now include Arizona and Maryland. Two states were added, Arizona and Maryland. Uh, none were removed. Now, um, the states of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut, all bordering, obviously, New York, would qualify to be added to the list. Uh, however, the governor has chosen that based on the, on the, the uh, difficulty in enforcing such a travel uh, advisory among those bordering states, that they're not adding those states to 
uh, the travel advisory. So the science suggests that those states would be added based on this travel advisory. The state is not adding them. Uh, and therefore, uh, at the very least, what the state is asking is if you travel to New Jersey, uh, Connecticut, or Pennsylvania, and uh, I assume the same is true for them from New York, uh, that you would limit um, non-essential travel and uh, uh, obviously recognize that people come and go from work to those states quite often. Uh, the state is not going to enforce their quarantine requirement for those states. However, those other 40, uh, the state of New York does, in fact, uh, require um, uh, the state of New York does, in fact, uh, require quarantine. So um, I, I do want to say this. I recognize that we're all tired. <laughs> uh, we're, uh, uh, we have been um, uh, going through this now uh, together for 10 months. Uh, the pandemic has affected a lot of lives uh, it, uh, and our response to it. Uh, there's no question. I certainly know the human toll of this disease, and we recognize the impact uh, that it has had on communities, businesses, families, uh, and so many others. I know that we're all ready to get over it. <laughs> I know that we're all a bit tired of it, uh, and pandemic fatigue has set in. Uh, we need you to remain vigilant, uh, especially as we uh, approach the flu season and colder weather. Um, we don't yet have this disease under control. Uh, there are still people who are getting sick. There are still those uh, that uh, end up in the hospital, and certainly there are those who are losing their lives to it. Uh, so we're asking you to, to remain vigilant and to be considerate of one another and this challenge that still is in front of us. Please continue uh, to engage in the social distancing uh, and remember to uh, uh, keep groups small. Uh, this isn't, again, the time to have larger activities. Just keep those grouping small. Engage in social distancing. Remember to, to do those basic disinfection, disinfecting and uh, uh, personal hygiene steps that we all know and uh, sometimes have to be reminded, washing hands, etc., and wear a mask. Uh, those are the things that we can do to slow the transmission of the disease, uh, to protect our health and the health of others, uh, but most uh, importantly, uh, to ensure for greater public health and to be considerate of one another. We just ask you uh, to summon the energy to continue to engage in those basic expectations so that uh, we can slow the transmission of the disease and stay uh, healthy. Uh, so um, I do uh, want to, uh, okay, uh, I do want to get updated. Uh, the state of New York uh, did issue uh, some Halloween guidance. Um, I, uh, as you know, uh, Dutchess County and counties across the state made clear that we felt that uh, Halloween, uh, you could engage in Halloween activity safely. Yes, certain risk, uh, but we want you to, uh, to be considerate of that. Uh, remember, uh, uh, we've provided some basic guidance. I know some people roll their eyes and say, well, why? Uh, uh, why, do, why, why do we need guidance for, for that? Uh, the basic, we're not telling you what to do. We're giving you basic steps that uh, I think would be appropriate and would help uh, to, uh, we think, would help to keep you safe. So the states issued some guidance. Uh, you can see that or visit us online and get those basic, uh, uh, basic expectations. But here, the bottom line is, again, small groups. Uh, this isn't the time necessarily to storm the village, but uh, but uh, small smaller groups stay closer to home among houses and families that you know uh, have uh, sort of uh, taken the basic precautions. That way, you're not you're not assuming any risk. You're not putting anyone at risk. Uh, and if you're not feeling well, uh, this isn't the year just to push it, right? If you have a sore throat or what have you, uh, even if you don't think it's COVID, uh, let's just assume it is uh, and stay in. Uh, and uh, and at the same time, if you're handing out candy, you might uh, you may want to take steps uh, to uh, uh, to be uh, considerate about it, right? We've we've shown you certain things. People have created you know tubes and sort of uh, uh, ways of uh, sort of uh, uh, handing out uh, candy through a candy shoot, or uh, if it's individual candies that perhaps uh, you know are out individually, people can collect. We even saw an example of someone who's who's making their front yard a lollipop farm, where where there are individual pieces. Of candy sort of in the uh, uh, propped up in the lawn and you just go pick one up and go on your way these are all fun things that you can do uh, this is the year to try to be a little more creative and innovative and mostly to be sensitive uh, to one another and remember uh, if you choose to get the flu shot this is definitely a year to do it uh, our health department and public health officials across the the country are encouraging that I got my flu shot last year my kids have their flu shot my wife has her flu shot um, and uh, uh, if uh, if you choose, this is uh, definitely a year to do it. Uh, obviously, if we can minimize the transmission of the of the flu and slow the transmission of COVID, uh, it's in everyone's best interest. Uh, remember, you can uh, get that flu shot at a doctor's office. Uh, many of our pharmacies.
pharmacies, several retailers provide it. Uh, and of course, if you don't have insurance or have a particular concern, uh, the Dutchess County Department of Behavioral and Community Health uh, can take appointments on Mondays, and you can visit duchessny.gov slash flu, duchessny.gov slash flu uh, for more information. Debbie, when will COVID uh, service exam, when will, excuse me, not COVID, I apologize, when will civil service exams resume? We're waiting on the state, right? The state of New York administers those. We're waiting on the state to decide. We are preparing to move forward with civil service exams uh, as early as the fourth quarter of this year, but we don't have final guidance from the state. Uh, so as soon as the state authorizes, we're prepared to move forward with that, uh, and we'll be uh, conducting those. The county's Human Resources Department is the civil service officer for every uh, government employer in the county. So in order to hire in New York, you have to, as, as a government, you hire from a list, and those lists are based on people taking tests, and you have to take the test to get on the list. And if there's no test, there's no list. So uh, the state uh, advises that uh, there will be guidance soon. Uh, and we are preparing uh, for as soon as the fourth quarter of this year uh, or, or the first quarter uh, early, excuse me, very early next year uh, for uh, the newest rounds of civil service uh, exams. Um, uh, Nate has asked about getting access to disinfecting supplies for the uh, need for businesses. Uh, you are correct. Accessing uh, these supplies has been very challenging. Uh, I would encourage you to reach out to your Chamber of Commerce or Business Association if, you're, if you are part of one. Uh, they have had some, some luck in, in purchasing collectively. Uh, beyond that, I will tell you we're all, fi we're all finding the same challenge in accessing, uh, ac accessing products. So uh, there is a delay in supply and a limited supply. And uh, what we've encouraged businesses, and, and there are several doing it, is, is to try to purchase uh, collectively. And if we can identify some sources for you, uh, we'll do that. And I'd ask uh, Nate, we'll connect you with uh, Think Duchess. So uh, folks, if we can, make sure that... Uh, uh, we connect, uh, Nate, with uh, the Think Duchess Alliance, and we'll be sure uh, to try to give you some direction uh, as to availability of those uh, products. I um, uh, wanted to uh, remind you, uh, next week, Wednesday, uh, October the 28th, is that Wednesday? I am required um, um, uh, to present to the Dutchess County Legislature and the public uh, my proposed budget. In fact, I, I do that prior to November 1st of the year uh, in accordance with the county's charter. So next Wednesday, October 28th at 11 a.m., uh, we will present uh, our 2021 uh, proposed budget uh, to you and the legislature. Uh, you, can, you will find all of the budget documents, uh, a presentation about it, and an interactive web page uh, or an interactive budget in brief at duchessny.gov at 11 a.m. Uh, next Wednesday. 5.30 p.m. next Wednesday, we'll come live uh, to you for our telephone and Facebook uh, live town hall. Uh, we'll be conducting that principally on the budget, but we'll talk obviously about our COVID-19 data. Uh, but 5.30 p.m. telephone town hall, Facebook live, uh, and then we'll have two uh, virtual town hall uh, events on the 2021 proposed budget, uh, one scheduled for noon on Tuesday, November 10th, and one scheduled for 6 p.m. on Thursday, November 19th. And they'll be virtual, so we'll have them again via Facebook. We'll be promoting those, and I'd ask uh, and encourage you to participate. Uh, three things basically you should know about the 2021 proposed budget. Uh, number one, we will not be raising taxes. We're not going to shift the county's financial burden onto property taxpayers. We will assume that responsibility, and we'll do that by shrinking uh, the county's budget. We'll be spending less uh, in 2021 than we do this year, and we will have uh, a, a reduction in the size of the county's workforce with no layoffs. Uh, we'll remain committed to several, uh, obviously, uh, core priorities, and we'll talk a little bit about those. Uh, but you can find uh, what we've already discussed in the area of youth services uh, and uh, mental health services, um, uh, along with a few others. You'll find video uh, content and some description of what we're proposing at duchessny.gov or on here on our Facebook uh, or Twitter feed. So uh, next Wednesday, 11 a.m., I will release the 2021 budget, uh, and there will be an interactive budget in brief you'll find online at duchessny.gov. Uh, importantly, this Saturday is National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. 
you'd be, I think, shocked how uh, how many um, um, un, un, unused and out of date prescription drugs end up either in in uh, infecting water supplies or end up on uh, uh, you know in in, in litter, uh, and how many end up in the hands of, of people who are living with substance abuse disorder. Uh, we've engaged aggressively in drug take back programs. We partner with uh, the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office and our Stop DWI. A program uh, to collect. We do this routinely throughout the year, but on Saturday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. on National Prescription Drug Take Back Day, the Sheriff's Office and our Stop DWI program will be collecting specifically at three locations, the Fishkill Walmart, uh, the CVS in Dover, uh, and Walgreens in LaGrange, 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Beyond that, uh, most of our local police agencies have drug take-back locations, and you can bring unwanted uh, or uh, unused prescription drugs to those locations uh, and, and uh, <laughs> discard of them safely. Wow. Uh, and um, uh, we really encourage that. Again, um, I, you might be surprised to find out uh, the, the challenge that so many have with substance abuse disorder, uh, how many of those individuals end up uh, getting these drugs. And we just want to continue our efforts to, to uh, keep these uh, uh, drugs out of the hands of those who suffer from and live with substance use uh, disorder. Um, Todd asks, are we getting a second wave? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I will say, tell you, uh, Todd, I mean, the short answer is we, we certainly expect that. I, I would say that we, we're not seeing it yet. We're seeing uh, increases in areas, uh, and um, but you are seeing in other parts of the globe uh, sort of the second wave. I, I believe and our health department would support the concept is that we might and likely will see increased cases as the weather gets colder, people get inside, and you would then dub that the second wave. Right now, we're seeing uh, likely the ordinary transmission of the disease. Thankfully, we've uh, been holding at a low rate of transmission. Uh, we're not seeing a growth or spike, if you will, in Dutchess County, but you look at other countries and you are seeing that happen. So uh, the expectation is as we enter the colder weather, just as this has happened 100 years ago and with other disease, infectious diseases, it is likely uh, that we will see a, a growth uh, during those months. The goal here is if we follow the basic expectations, we can slow the transmission and not severely impact uh, hospitals or the healthcare system. That has been the goal all along and remains so. Uh, Michelle asks, can I travel to Connecticut? The short answer is you can travel to Connecticut. It's not being added to the travel advisory. However, uh, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, uh, and Pennsylvania all now have transmission rates, positivity rates, that would mirror those other states uh, that are on the travel advisory. So yes, you can travel. We're encouraging folks to keep that limited, uh, but uh, those are not being added to the travel advisory. The governor acknowledges what is a reality anyway, and that is uh, enforcing such an advisory is complicated enough, uh, certainly uh, in, the, in the proximity of those border states, it becomes more complicated. That is their determination. I'm just here to tell you what it is. I um, want to update you on a few other. Uh, yesterday, uh, we uh, conducted uh, our second uh, drive-in bingo, the Office for the Aging, uh, and uh, very grateful to our OFA staff, Todd Tancredi, its director, and all the volunteers who have participated. Uh, we had another successful drive-in bingo. We'll have our third tomorrow, October 20, tomorrow, October 22nd, at the Thomas J. Boyce Park in Wingdale, the town of Dover. Hope to see you there. You don't have to live in Dover, but if uh, you obviously live in the eastern part of the county, you might find your way there. Another great, uh, great event. So uh, really, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, those who are participating seem to enjoy it. And it might be something we continue to do. But uh, uh, for now, drive in bingo tomorrow, 22nd, uh, at uh, the Thomas J. Boyce Park. What time do folks need to get there? By 1 p.m. We start at 1? We start at 1. So get, get there, bring your lucky charm, and be ready for that. Uh, we conducted two public hearings on our Lake Walton on our Lake Walton project. As you know, the county acquired Lake Walton thanks to a partnership with Scenic Hudson, uh, and uh, we are going to build a universally accessible passive uh, park uh, there at Lake Walton. We've uh, named the Lake Walton Preserve. Grateful to our friends uh, in the town of East Fishkill, Supervisor Nick D'Alessandro and the town board have been terrifically supportive. Grateful to uh, legislators uh, Caswell, uh, Steve Caswell, and John Metzger for their support of the project. Uh, we have a survey we'd like you to participate in. Help us to find uh, define how we wish to develop that project. You can find it at duchessny.gov slash park survey. 
Park Singular Survey, P A R K S U R V E Y, DutchessNY.gov Park Survey. Please fill that out. It'll help inform us on our decision making as we uh, move forward with the development of that uh, park. If you support us moving forward, we are asking the county legislature uh, for a bonding authority. We can afford it. Uh, believe me, uh, we, we've limited the number of projects we're engaging in this year, uh, but we're asking the county legislature for bonding authority to begin to design the Lake Walton Preserve connection to the Dutchess Rail Trail and that uh, main loop uh, that we'd like to get underway next year. So please reach out to your county legislator. Uh, if you support us taking the next step on this project, uh, it will be, as I said, accessible to everyone of every ability. Very exciting project, and we hope that you might join us in providing some insight and some of your ideas so that we develop it uh, in a way that's uh, 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 in a way that's of benefit to you and to uh, the county park system. Okay, uh, election day. There is an election day. <laughs> in, case, in case you want to know, <laughs> this shouldn't come as a surprise. Election day is Tuesday, November 3rd, the first Tuesday after the first Monday of November. Do you know why? because it's in the Constitution. <laughs> uh, first Tuesday after first Thursday, Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd. Obviously, uh, highest office in the land, uh, up for, uh, for election, President, uh, members of Congress, up for election and selection, members of the state legislature, uh, and locally, there are a few local elections, inf including a county court position, uh, and um, uh, several uh, local uh, uh, board seats, what have you, based on special elections, what have you. So. Um, uh, election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. If you choose to vote in person, you can show up at your poll site on Tuesday, November 3rd and vote. Keep in mind that you will likely engage, have to uh, wait a bit. There's likely to be lines. You will have to socially distance. We're asking uh, the, the Board of Elections, New York State County Board of Elections, requiring social distancing and that you wear a mask in line and when you vote. Voting uh, um, areas will be wiped clean and disinfected. So just expect on Election Day, it'll be a little slower than normal, uh, but you can still vote on person in person on Election Day. Should you wish to vote via absentee ballot, you must get your absentee ballot uh, application done. Here it is. You must apply by October 27th for your absentee ballot. You can do so at, online, elections.duchessny.gov. Uh, for an absentee ballot application. You can email, fax, or mail your application, although at this, at this late date, I'd encourage you to do that via, uh, via the website. Go to elections, plural, dot duchessny.gov uh, for uh, your absentee ballot application. You must do that by October 27th. You then will receive a ballot. You must uh, 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 complete that ballot, Select your candidates. Be very careful. Remember, fill in the dot only for the candidate you want. Don't vote for more than you can vote for in any particular election. And if you vote for no one, <laughs> you voted for no one. So uh, uh, fill out your ballot, uh, and then uh, ballots must be returned to the Board of Elections or postmarked, correct, by November 3rd. So choose your candidates, mail or drop off your ballot by November 3rd, uh, and they get mailed to the Dutchess County Board of Elections. Lastly, uh, if you don't want to vote on Election Day in person, uh, but you don't want to vote by the absentee, you can vote early. New York State and Dutchess County allows for early voting. That begins on Saturday, October the 24th. Five locations in Dutchess County. You can vote at any one of those five locations. You can live anywhere in Dutchess County and vote in any one of these five locations. They are Fishkill Town Hall in the town of Fishkill, Rhinebeck Town Hall in the village of Rhinebeck, the Millbrook Firehouse in the village of Millbrook, the Dutchess County Board of Elections on Cannon Street in the city of Poughkeepsie, or the Boardman Road Branch Library in the town of Poughkeepsie. Those locations uh, will be open for in-person voting. Visit Dutchess Elections. Dot <laughs> oh, I did it wrong. Visit elections.duchessny.gov. I tell you, elections.duchessny.gov, and you can get the detailed information and you can vote in person early at those locations. And again, uh, be prepared to wait a little, be prepared to socially distance, and wear a mask. Uh, if there are no other questions, I think we've uh, covered our topics. Uh, uh, as a reminder, 
Uh, again, that's how you vote in Dutchess County. You can vote early, you can vote absentee, uh, or you can vote in person on Election Day. Please exercise your right to vote. Very, very critical. All elections are important, and it does matter who you vote for, so please show up and vote. On the back of your ballot, uh, as a reminder, uh, we are, uh, Dutchess County has a proposition. Um, we've got a deal for you. Uh, the county legislature has adopted a reform measure, independent reapportionment. So for history, Every 10 years, the county legislature re rewrites, redraws the lines of a legislative districts. Uh, this year, the legislature is, is uh, asking you to, uh, to consider cre creation of an independent uh, commission. Rather than having the members of the legislature draw the lines, we're asking for an independent commission to draw the lines. And uh, you'll find that ballot question on the back of your ballot. Please turn over your ballot and vote yes or no for that. I support the referendum. I support the proposition. Uh, and hope you'll consider uh, that as well. Elizabeth, how long should I wait until I get my absentee ballot? That is a darn fine question, right? If you apply it online, it should only take a couple days for you to get your ballot. So if you've applied online or you've mailed it in and it's been several days, you should reach out to the Board of Elections and be certain they received your application for an absentee ballot and that you'll be getting your ballot. You don't want to miss that opportunity. Uh, you can imagine um, just normal course of business, right? You fill it out. Uh, it will take a day, obviously, to process that. They're processing them daily. The staff of the Board of Elections doing this daily. Uh, and then if you're, get, you're getting the application, obviously, and the ballot by mail, it'll take, uh, in Dutchess County, it could take two to three days uh, to get from any one location through the mail to you. So if you've been waiting more than two or three days, uh, you should definitely reach out to the Board of Elections, confirm they have your application, and then if it, there was an error, please be sure to apply again. Uh, can an absentee ballot can absentee be put in the mail on election day? I'm going to confirm this, but I believe the answer is yes, yes, right. So if it's postmarked November 3rd, it's counted as a November 3rd a vote. So the short answer is yes. If you want, you can hand deliver your absentee ballot. I'm confirming over my shoulder. Uh, um, if you want, you can hand deliver your absentee ballot to the Board of Elections. I think you can even bring it in uh, to a poll site, but that doesn't make any sense, right? You can, but... They discourage that. Thank you. Thank you. They discourage that. But And if you can show up at the poll site, you should just vote. <laughs> so, But you can hand deliver an absentee ballot to the Board of Elections. And again, that ballot must be into the board or postmarked by November 3rd. Now, there are some people I saw have commented before, and I'll just clarify, right? Um, well, it should be in before Election Day. Election Day is November 3rd. If your ballot is, ca is postmarked November 3rd, it's deemed to have been cast November 3rd. And therefore, like every other person, uh, your ballot's been in. In New York and in Dutchess County, absentee ballots are not going to be counted on the night of Election Day. It's going to take several days and possibly several weeks before absentee ballots all get counted. So on Election Day here in Dutchess and in New York State, you're going to go to the website that night and you're going to want to look up the election results. What you'll see almost instantly after 9 p.m. Uh, are the numbers that uh, come from early voting because that's already uh, been stored, not opened, not counted, but stored, and they'll activate those numbers uh, at uh, 9, 10, 9, uh, 9 p.m., 9, 15 p.m. And then as the results from individual poll sites come in from across the county, the Board of Elections will continually update uh, the, the, the vote count. Absentee ballots, however, will not be, they won't even start counting those ballots uh, until after Election Day. They'll start the week after, or the week of elections, but it'll take time, and those will be counted over the course of several days and several weeks. So look for that. And so with that, as a reminder, on October 28th, I will release the 2021 county budget. Uh, we look forward to our first town hall meeting on the county budget next Wednesday at 5 p.m. It'll be a telephone town hall and Facebook Live. And in the meantime, uh, we're going to uh, sign off with a, a local video regarding uh, some of our budget activity. And as I've said many, many times, stay well, be safe, and be kind to each other. This year has undoubtedly been challenging. Perhaps no. No one, though, has been more impacted by these uncertain times than our children, with their home lives and education turned upside down. Despite the challenges we already have faced, Dutchess County remains steadfast in our mission to care for our youth and help them thrive. My 2021 budget continues our county's support for our next generation. As part of our path to promise, the county's 
innovative initiative to provide all children assets they need to become successful young adults, we are launching a P2P website, providing young people and families a tool to available services by entering either a service category, age, or geographic area. After the initial launch, we'll add the capability to track and analyze data related to the six Path to Promise domains and performance indicators to make informed decisions about current and future programming. And we'll engage with local schools to obtain similar student data to measure success. Helping young people continue the conversation, our Digital Youth Hub, a partnership with the Artifact, is a website and social media platform for people to receive messages, learn about local resources and support, including job opportunities and internships, and share their artwork and voice. Personifying our Path to Promise motto, Nothing About Me Without Me, teens have been hired to work on this project and engage with their peers. My 2021 budget increases support for the Path to Promise by 40% expanding grants to community partners and broadening the reach of this vital program. We are excited about collaborating with the City of Poughkeepsie to build a Youth Opportunity Center to benefit young people throughout Dutchess County, bringing a number of our partners together to expand youth services and be the central hub of our Path to Promise. The county will also partner to provide vulnerable young people the opportunity to enjoy nature in rural Dutchess County, offering mentors to expand their athletic ability, personal development, and self-reliance through a unique camp experience. To keep kids from entering the juvenile justice, we will employ the nationally recognized Youth Advocate Program to keep these young people safely in their homes. This program results in savings for years, but more importantly, provides these kids and their families with intensive services in their homes and community, including case management, crisis intervention, and other supports. The program utilizes best practices and core principles found in mentoring, restorative justice, and positive youth development. We must not, and we will not, let anything, not even these unprecedented times, derail us from the tremendous impact we've made in children's lives. My 2021 budget upholds our commitment to Dutchess County's youth and sets an example showing how we provide for our future and how we do it together.